Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So during the winter months, are you battling Bermuda's most arch nemesis? You wanna find out what I'm talking about? You better stay tuned. And so welcome back to season two, episode six here on Dwayne's World. So I'm very excited about today's episode because I'm going to be dealing with the problem that is very common among most of us Bermuda owners. And the problem I'm talking about is a weed that we deal with known as Poana. Now, for those of you that are new to Bermuda grass, there's really two weeds throughout the entire year that really bug us Bermuda owners that are probably the more difficult to have to deal with. One is Poana during the winter months and crabgrass during the growing season. Now, when you're looking at dealing with Poana, there's a couple of different ways of going about it. Now, if you were to go to your big box store and try to find a selective herbicide that would actually kill Poana, you probably only have a couple of options. The most common option I would probably say that people then tend to go with is a product known as Image. And Image works great. However, the thing with Image is you have to be extremely patient. It can take almost five to six weeks before you see the full effect. And not only that, in some cases, you may need to do a second application. Now, some people may say, well, Dwayne, what if I don't want to wait that long? What other options do I have? You can also look at a product called Negate. But the problem with Negate is Negate tends to be better if you're dealing with a ton of square footage, such as an acre of property. So the problem I find with Negate, Negate is sold in a dry concentration and needs to be converted into a liquid intermediary mix. From that intermediary mix, you then make the actual solution that you will be applying to your lawn. Now you may be wondering, well, why is that a problem? Yes, it's an extra step, but that doesn't sound that difficult. And the process itself probably isn't really that difficult. The problem I have with it is once the intermediary mix is made, it only lasts a certain amount of weeks. And after that time frame, that is no longer good to be able to be sprayed. So that one bottle is really overkill for most people's application, unless you're probably spraying anything over an acre, which is not gonna fit really most of your residential applications. So now if image is kind of off the table and the gate is now off the table, what other herbicide should I be looking at? Well, there's one other one that's probably the king of them all, and it's known as Certainty. Okay, so one of the reasons why I decided to kind of hold off on purchasing Certainty over the last couple of years is just because of the fact that I rarely deal with sedges in my lawn during the growing season. However, Poana depends from season to season on how bad the outbreak was. Now, in this particular season, meaning last season, I did not have a tremendous amount of Poa. However, it is still something that I hate to deal with during the winter months, so I kind of figured it would be a good thing to be able to add to my arsenal. Now, one herbicide that I have used last year that I had tremendous success with, unrelated to Poa or sedges, is Celsius. Celsius is another great herbicide that I would highly recommend because both Celsius and Certainty do not have a temperature restriction, which I absolutely need in the climate that I live in. In most cases, any herbicides you purchase at like your big box stores, for example, generally have a temperature restriction and should not be applied when the temperature is over 85 degrees. That's why I absolutely love Celsius and I absolutely love Certainty because of the fact that you do not have to deal with those temperature restrictions, which in my case would be most of the growing season. All right, so let me give you guys an example of an area that I absolutely want to spray out. So as you guys can see here, I have quite a bit of POA and a small amount of square footage. You know, the good thing about this particular POA here, if there is such a thing, is it hasn't fully matured. So with the full rate that I'm going with, which is again, two scoops for two and a half gallons of water, it absolutely should knock out this POA. You know, I have a little bit more over as you come over to this side. This area of my lawn tends to have a lot more moisture. Um, it doesn't get as much sun. And that's probably why I have the outbreak that I do as it relates to POA. All right, so let me take you over to an area of my lawn here where I did spray some image about six to eight weeks ago. And as you guys can see there, it definitely does work. It does help kill it off. However, I still have some green there. So I don't know if this POA is gonna come back, it may require a second treatment. I'm gonna hit this area again today with Celsius, but this is an example where image does work, but maybe not as effectively as we would like and as quickly 
as we would like. So if I come over to this area here, just a little bit further back along my fence line, again, I have another area that appears to have a POA outbreak. All right, so one other weed that I constantly have an issue with during the winter months is what I believe is burrweed, as you guys can see there. That's Celsius today, and it will be able to take care of this burrweed fairly effectively. All right, so with that, let me show you guys a certainty product, the rate I'm gonna use, and how I'm gonna apply it. Here. All right, so this is what I'll be using to apply my herbicide to my lawn today. Now, you, what you're looking at is a Ryobi four gallon backpack sprayer. It uses the 18 volt battery powered system. This is the older generation Ryobi backpack sprayer. It no longer is sold. However, there's a newer model, which I can't really speak to, but I have had nothing but great success with this backpack sprayer. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy as it relates to backpack sprayers, and people think that you have to have the best of the best in order to get a great result. So regardless of what type of backpack sprayer you're using, it has to be properly calibrated. So that way you know how fast you need to walk whenever you're applying your chemicals. Now, one of the things I did do to this backpack sprayer is I did upgrade the wand. I went ahead and installed a stainless steel wand here. Although the wand is definitely a nice upgrade, what really makes a difference as it relates to a backpack sprayer are the tips that are being used. Now, this is definitely the right tip for my application today. However, if you're looking at something that is maybe more for the soil, you're going to want to look at a flood jet tip. All right, so let's take a closer look here at the products I'll be applying today. Again, the certainty that I talked about along with the Celsius, but we're also gonna be using a surfactant. This one is made by High Yield. It's a spreader sticker, basically gonna allow that herbicide to really stick to the foliar, as well as some blue marker dye. So that way I'll know what areas that I've already covered. So I'm not over applying that particular herbicide. All right, one of the things that is optional that you can use is a digital scale to measure out how much of a particular herbicide you're gonna need. Now, I've also used this in the past for pre-emergent. It really works out great, so that way I know exactly how much of the concentrate I'm putting into the gallons of water. And with that, let's go ahead and mix it up. All right, so one of the things I like to do, which is a tip I got from Ron Henry, is I'll start by just adding water to my backpack sprayer. As you guys can see here, I have about a gallon and a half of water. Now my plan is to mix up about two and a half gallons of total solution. So now that I have about a gallon and a half of water in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add my chemicals. And then from there, I'm gonna fill it up to about two and a half gallons. All right, so here's the little tray that comes with the actual scale that I can use to hold the herbicide. Now once I get this thing in place here and kind of centered, you'll notice obviously it's gonna measure the weight there. Right now I have it set to ounces. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my mode to grams because that's how I wanna measure out my particular product. Now, as you guys can see here, I have, this thing weighs about 5.4, a little under 5.4 grams. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tar button. And what the tar button will do is it'll basically clear it out. So now when I add my chemicals, I get exactly how much chemical I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with Celsius. Now Celsius does include a measuring cup that you can use. I like to be a little more exact as it comes to chemicals. Um, so that's why I really like the scale here. The rate I'm gonna go with is 3.2 grams per gallon of water, which is good for a thousand square feet. The amount of product I'm going to need for two and a half gallons of water is going to be eight grams. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out eight grams. Yeah, I may overfill here, so I may just go four and four. All right, we have a hair over four there, and that's fine. I'll go ahead and add that to my backpack sprayer here and just dump that in. Because it's hard to fit eight grams in such a small little container there. But let me go ahead and show you guys how I was filling it up here. So as you guys can see there, that's a little bit over a gram. I'm gonna keep going here until I get to four grams. Again, I already added four grams to the backpack sprayer. And once I add this four grams, we will get to the eight grams that we need for our total mix. Oh, it's a hair over, take a little bit off. Now you don't have to be as precise as I do, but why not if you have a digital scale? Now we're right there, we're really close to the four grams. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the backpack sprayer. All right, so now I'm gonna be applying my certainty, as you can see there. Now the rate that we want is we need two scoops each to be able to get to the two and a half gallons. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead just inside my scale out and measure it out. And again, I'm gonna need 1.6 grams to do my full application. As you guys can see there, that was the one scoop. It's just a hair under 0.8, which is exactly what we want. Not that I would doubt the measuring spoon, but you never know. All right, and now for my second scoop. 
All right, looks like we're just a hair over 1.61, which is perfect for what we're gonna need. All right, so as you guys can see there, I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the backpack spare. This is the surfactant I'm gonna go with. It's made by High Yield. It's a non-ionic surfactant. Now there's other non-ionic surfactants you could pick up on the market. It does not have to be specifically the High Yield brand. It just, I've used this before in the past and it works really well. All right, so the rate I'm gonna need per the label is one teaspoon per gallon of water. So in this application, I'm gonna need two and a half teaspoons. The way I'm gonna measure it out, well, just with these little measuring spoons. All right, so here it goes. All right, it's one teaspoon there, one teaspoon there, and about a half. That's good. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my blue marker dye here. The rate that it's calling for is about a half an ounce per gallon of water. I'm not gonna necessarily measure it out. I'm just gonna add a little bit to the tank. You can add more or add less depending on how dark you want your actual solution to be. One thing I'll just say is be careful with this marker dye. The last thing you wanna do is make a mess as I'm kind of doing right there. I always like to have a little um, towel nearby in case I need to wipe up anything here. But I want to keep it in the tank and not outside the tank. All right, so that's probably good there. I'm going to go ahead and cap it off here. I did spill a little bit on the side. I'm going to get a little towel, wipe that off. So that way I'm not bringing that else anywhere else. All right, so I'm getting close to two and a half gallons here. I'm gonna kind of eyeball it just because there is no two and a half gallon marking. That is where you do not want to apply a lot of water pressure to your hose uh, because of the fact that you do not want this foaming up like crazy. All right, so one of the last things I like to do is I like to use this paint mixer here to help suspend the chemical. All right, so all I'm gonna do is insert this into the actual tank and give it a little spin. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start mixing. I'm not gonna go crazy with it. I just wanna give it a good mix here. Uh, you know, the more time I spend here and actually mixing and suspending it, the better off it's going to be. But you do not have to go at a crazy fast rate. One of the things I would absolutely recommend is make sure you are wearing proper PPE, uh, both gloves and safety glasses, because the last thing you want is just stuff to spill back and get into your eye and have a different problem on your hands. So the only last thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and actually spray the actual chemical back into the tank. So that way I ensure that I have a good mix at the tip of the spray nozzle when I first start spraying. And I'll know that I'm there because I'll start to see the blue dye as I'm coming through. And that is looking pretty good already. All right, so here's my lawn as it currently sits. As you guys can see there near the fence line, I'm starting to get a little bit of green up. For those of you that are new to my channel, this is about 7,000 square feet of hybrid Bermuda. Now, because of the fact that the majority of my lawn is still dormant, this is why I want to apply my post-emergence today before the lawn really starts to green up. I'm going to walk in the same direction as if I was mowing the lawn, just so I can capture every area of my lawn. Now, this is where the blue marker dye is really going to come in, because it will allow me to really know what I sprayed and what I haven't sprayed. What you do not want to be doing is you do not want to be doing multiple passes, meaning I should not be going back and forth and back and forth over the same area. Hypothetically, if I did that, that is one application, two applications, three applications, four applications. So all we want to do is one application. And that's the right way to spray your herbicides. Now, one of the things I probably should have done, I probably should have went a little bit heavier with the marker dye, just so I could see it a little bit better. But at the same time, I'm still able to see exactly what I'm doing as I'm going ahead and spraying the lawn here. So this is the area that I actually showed you guys on the video earlier. So now we're going to go ahead and spray it out. Now 
Now again, just because there is so much poenta in this one area, I am somewhat doing a blanket spray versus doing an individual spot spray. Just because of the amount of poenta here, I want to make sure I capture it all. Now, because of the fact that I went ahead and mixed in the Celsius, I have quite a bit of broadleaf out here in my flower bed that I can go ahead and treat at the same time. The certainty on its own would not take care of the broadleaf. However, being that I have a, both a mixture of poana and broadleaf here, this is the perfect application. All right, so this is the other area that I showed you guys on the video. So what I'm gonna do, rather than do an individual spraying of each of the weeds, I am gonna do a blanket spray just in this little area here. Now, as you guys can see here, hopefully I can zoom in for you. All right, so hopefully it's coming out on the camera here. I sprayed this area a couple weeks ago with Celsius, actually. And as you can tell, some of the burrweed there is dying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it again just because I'm already out here. But this is where a perfect example of where the Celsius will absolutely take care of that burrweed. All right, kind of in the same area here, as you guys can tell, I have a little bit of a pocket area. So again, wherever I have these big pocket areas, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a blanket spray. Um, so that way I make sure I cover everything. For the most part here, most of this is poana. However, there is a little bit of that burrweed there that you can see, or hopefully you should be able to see on the video. Um, and this is gonna take care of that at the same time, which is why I love mixing certainty with Celsius. All right, another little pocket here. So again, you don't have to do a complete blanket spray. You're just looking for your areas that you know you have the poana and or weeds uh, to be able to knock out. On this part of my lawn here, as you guys can see, I'm getting a little bit of green up, uh, which is absolutely great. But at the same time, I'll still walk through this area so that way I know that I capture any of the weeds that were still here. Now, one of the things I was dealing with in the past is I was dealing with spurge. And I'm looking to see, I have a little bit right here, but it looks like it's actually dying. I'm going to go ahead and spray that out. Looks like a little bit right there, a little bit right there, right there, definitely a little bit right there. Ah, here's some right there. I can tell the spurge is there because you can see a little bit of red a lot of times with spurge, at least the spurge that I battle with. Um, and that's where I'm able to identify where it's at. Now, some people may say, well, Dwayne, how do you know the difference between that and whether or not it's Bermuda coming back? You know, it just looks different. You can tell um, once you start to understand what your Bermuda looks like or should look like, you know, I'm able to tell the difference between that spray right there and this being green up over here. So again, it just takes a little bit of time and eventually you'll get the hang of knowing the difference uh, between Poana and actual Bermuda. Here, spray that, spray that, spray that. Now, some of you may be concerned, well, you got blue dye on the concrete. That's gonna go away in about a day or two. Now, one of the reasons why I absolutely wanted to get this down today is I think we're gonna have some rain in the forecast tomorrow, but as long as you don't have rain within the next, I don't know, 12 hours or so, you're generally okay. A little bit more burrweed here. We're going to take care of that. Burrweed here that was dying, along with Poana that was dying. Take care of that there. Right there, we'll go ahead and knock that out. And there's some burrweed here that we're gonna go ahead and take care of, both new and old. Burrweed here, looks like it's already on its way out. But still gonna give another spray, a little bit more Poana. And I think we're looking pretty good. All right, so now I'm just gonna find those random areas in my lawn here that I may have missed. So again, as you guys notice here, I'm not going crazy. I'm just doing quick little single passes over anything that I may see. 
All right, so I'm just kind of saving this back area here for you guys to see. There's quite a bit of overgrown poana. I purposely left it like this. I wanted to see how well the certainty will do with poana that's this overgrown. So again, we'd have a little bit of, uh, again, we got also a little bit of broadleaf in there. We're gonna go ahead and spray that out. I'm just gonna do one single blanket pass here and we'll see what type of result we get from spraying that out. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I just want to wrap up with a couple final thoughts here. You know, I did do the POV for those of you that are new to backpack spraying and just thought, you know what, it'd be kind of interesting to show you guys a point of view of what I see when I'm actually spraying. So I hope you guys found that part helpful. If you did, please make sure to give me a like and go ahead and comment down below. But the question comes up is, Duane, do I have to combine both Celsius and Certainty together whenever I'm spraying weeds? Well, I would say the answer depends. It depends on the weeds that you're tackling. For example, in my application today, I wanted to take care of both the POA and the burrweed, and each of them would require a separate herbicide. But that's the thing I absolutely love about Celsius and Certainty is they play very nice together and they can be mixed. So for me, it was more about combining them, not necessarily from the standpoint of effectiveness, but combining them from the standpoint of convenience. So I'd only need to make one batch. Could I have made separate batches? Absolutely, there'd be nothing wrong with that. But I chose for this video to be able to combine them. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned something, that's great. If not, and you just enjoyed watching, I definitely appreciate the support. And as always, be excellent and party on.